Now, we're going to talk about one of my biggest pet peeves. You're going to want to pay extra attention. Repeat after me. Evolution is not survival of the fittest. But let's talk about why. So survival of the fittest is one of the most common terms I hear thrown around to describe evolution. And a lot of people keep on attributing it to Darwin. But you're wrong. Herbert Spencer said this. Herbert Spencer was a proponent of social Darwinism, which is terrible in many respects. He um, tried to use Darwin's theories to say we shouldn't, you know, give any aid to the poor or have any of our, you know, social safety net. That's bad. Um, but racism and uh, classism aside, let's talk about some of the other problems with this term. First, the colloquial usage is different than the scientific definition for fitness. Remember, colloquial the colloquial use of fitness is like strength or health or all of that stuff. In evolution, we mean babies. <laughs> evolution cares about babies almost as much as Orson Scott Gard does. Um, but there's also... Because of this specific definition, now we have a problem in what that means. Here's a nice quote from Ernst Mayer, remember, one of the big figures from the modern synthesis. Now the objection was raised that the entire theory of natural selection rested on a tautology. Who survives? The fittest. Who are the fittest? Those that survive. So yes, a tautology means something that defines itself. So if we are just dis, uh, defining fitness and fittest this way, yes, it is a tautology. So that means survival of the fittest is not a good uh, statement to use. That doesn't negate all of evolution, of course, um, but that does mean we shouldn't use this phrase with which to describe it. And let's also look at some of the other things in evolution. First, as we learn through the forces of evolution, evolution can be random. So if with our four different forces here, mutation, Definitely random. Genetic drift, also random. We don't know which allele is going to be fixed. Um, gene flow, that's highly dependent on the scenario. Um, and selection is really the only force of evolution that is truly directional. So, okay, we know evolution can't be survival of the fittest because there's so much randomness, but you might ask maybe just selection. Maybe selection is survival of the fittest. Let's work through an example. Let's talk about orangutans. This gorgeous gentleman here, this is an adult male. Um, he has these fully these flanges on his face, and that is the sign that he has uh, uh, reached you know, sexual maturity with all of these different characteristics. Um, but let's look at some other orangutans. Here is that flanged male we just said, but where are these other two faces? Do you have any idea? Here we have a female in the center, but we also have an unflanged male. So he does not have those fully developed secondary sex characteristics of the flanged male. And you'll notice he looks very similar to our female. And what's interesting is even though he hasn't developed all of these secondary sex characteristics, he is actually fully sexually mature. Um, flange orangutan males are territorial and they will not let another flange male in their territory. But for whatever reason, they are actually tolerant of unflanged males. Um, we of course cannot get inside their heads. So it's unknown whether they actually think they're females or they just, you know, think they're juveniles or whatever. But we do know flange males tend to leave unflanged males alone. But this does give the opportunity for these unflanged males to like sneak around in the territory of these flange males and have their own kids. And that's exactly what happens. So this unflanged male here, he's not the fittest. He's not, or if we're talking about the colloquial definition, he's not the strongest, but it still works. Evolution and natural selection isn't about the strongest. It's about, does it work? Is it good enough? We get a lot of really weird solutions, a lot of hacks, and honestly, a lot of things that aren't strong because it, if you're in a place that's food stress, then the big and strong individuals will be selected against because they need more food. So instead of survival of the fittest, a better way to think of evolution and especially natural selection is reproduction of the good enough. Because this means it recognizes evolution is random. It's talking about strong enough, not the strongest. 
because most of the time natural selection is actually just about removing the few that aren't quite good enough. And there's a lot of possible answers that we'll get through and are acceptable. So can you explain? Why is evolution not the survival of the fittest?